Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing a beautiful makeup tutorial using a concealer that has over 90,000 five-star reviews on Amazon. Is this possible? It is a drugstore concealer. It is under $10 and we're going to touch on what is a coastal grandmother. You ready? Let's get this beauty started. I'm going to just start off with doing a simple skin prep. I'm going to use my Fortune on my cellar water, my Shiseido cotton, and I have been really enjoying this cotton. This cotton feels like butter on my skin. And you have seen or heard that I was using, if you watch my videos prior, that I was using this cotton that I bought in bulk at Costco. And it was like scratching my eye when I would go like this, like the round part was scratching my eye. And I thought, well, I have so many in bulk. I might as well keep using them, what have you. And then I just got one day, I was like, all right, I can't do this. Like, what am I doing? This doesn't feel good. I need something to be up leveled and not scratching my skin. And I decided to change that. I wanted something that was more luxurious and made me feel good when I would do it. And I gotta tell you, this is like so simple and so like insignificant, but yet it's not. Like using this cotton that feels absolutely so beautiful on the skin and it's such a great feeling it really makes a big difference i know that probably sounds silly to some people but it really makes a big difference speaking of luxurious coastal grandmother is a term that has been coined over on TikTok. it has gone everywhere up from the news stations blog posts you name it you've probably heard about it but what really is a coastal grandmother i'm going to be using the caudalie premier crew serum hydrate my skin i love this serum it soaks right in so Coastal Grandmother is basically taking an aspirational life and making it part of your life. So this is really inspired by that movie, Something's Gotta Give in 2003, Nancy Myers movie with Diane Keaton, Jack Nicholson, Amanda Peet. The character's name was Erica Jane Barry and she was a playwright and she lived on the coast in the Hamptons. She had this beautiful house in the Hamptons and it really was an inspiration for me when I wrote my book. Like I really wanted to be like this character. So I've been probably living the Coastal Grandmother lifestyle, not even knowing it for so long hence my sweater so she wore turtlenecks and sweaters during the summer and it was funny because you know i wear blazers during the summer like i always worn a blazer so to me it was like oh i totally understand turtleneck in the summer no biggie but to everybody else it's like what's wrong with you so she would wear all these neutral colors and khakis and it's just such a beautiful life she hangs out at the farmer's market she loves hosting and cooking and all of these great things now you don't have to be a grandmother you don't have to live on the coast you can bring elements into your life to really up level your life like I buy hydrangeas during the summers and I have an orchid little garden I don't have a garden because you know I'm in a temporary space while we build this house that's taking like way longer than ever thought possible but I have a little orchid garden I go out and do that or have a glass of wine and you know I'll just read a book or it's just taking these different aspects and I just think it's such a great you know the real life is inspiration is Oprah but going in with some SPF 50 La Roche Posay. So that's really the real life inspiration, but you know, it's come one, come all, you know, and I don't understand what the big deal is about the word grandmother. You know, I guess I have a different perspective on the word grandmother. I know everybody's like, oh, I don't wanna be a grandmother and so old, or I me ma, Mimi and Yaya, and everybody names themselves something other than grandmothers. Even my own grandmother, she went, she decided she wanted to be called Grandy, which I thought was, I don't like, all right, whatever. But, you know, I guess I have a different perspective because I will never be a grandmother. My mom will never be a grandmother. And I think it's a very big privilege to be a grandmother, to have another generation, to really enjoy having grandchildren and being called a grandmother or whatever you want to do. I don't know. That's just my opinion because, you know, my experience is different with not being able to have children, what have you. I'm very strong about the way you talk to yourself and words have power. So, if you're sitting around saying, oh, I'm gonna be so old, I'm a grandmother, I don't want anyone calling me granny or grant, you should be thrilled that you have that opportunity. And a lot of women don't, you know, everybody has a different story. I would do anything to be called a grandmother or my mother would do anything to be called a grandmother. So it's just something to keep in perspective that when you say that out loud, just think about what you're saying. A lot of women don't get that opportunity. So that's just, you know, coming from my experience, take it for what it is, but that's my thought process on the word grandmother. So being a coastal grandmother, a CG, I'm all about. Sunscreen is on. I'm gonna just prep my skin with a little fiercely smooth. I want my skin to be nice and smooth by the time I get to it. So I'm going to just use a little bit of my 
Fiercely Smooth Face Primer, and I'm going to put it on. I usually like to do it in the T-zone where I have more texture, and this really smooths out my skin. It's going to look beautiful once I put on my foundation and my concealer. We're gonna start off first with my eye primer. This is the first thing I always do to my eyes. You can see that they are a little bit pigmented. I want to neutralize them out. So I go all the way into the inner corner. I'm at the base of the lash line and then I will go up to the brow bone. So you're going to see that I am neutralizing out my eyelid. The reason why I do this is because, especially when I'm going in with a beautiful neutral palette, I don't wanna see the darkness coming through. I just don't ever feel that my eyeshadow looks right if I'm not priming my eye with an eye primer and not a clear eye primer. It has to be where it's color correcting. So I'm neutralizing out my eye. You can see the difference between primed and unprimed. So this is just my way, even on set when I was doing makeup on anybody. I could not do their eyes without having the eye primer. It's just so important and it just really enhances the eyeshadow. All right, so the eye primer is on. We're gonna go into this beautiful Dior palette called Nude Dress, number 649. Look how beautiful. This is like such a beautiful palette. I don't need five colors. This is my only like issue when it comes to buying these palettes. I like three colors, five is overkill. I'm never gonna use those. And I just really would be using three. So I find myself always in a little conundrum because I always feel like I'm wasting the shadows because I'm not using all of them. So I had tried putting on the shadow with the little applicators that come in it and I found it to be very challenging and difficult. So I'm going to just be using my shadow brush from my essential makeup brush kit and I'm gonna go into this really beautiful color right here. They don't have names of the colors, so I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing. So we're going to place this on the lid. I mean, you can see just how beautiful this color is. It's almost like a rosy gold. And I'm just putting it on the lid, just in the center like I normally do, and then I work it out just to make sure I don't have too much on. I'm going to go into the lightest color here, and I'm going to just flip the brush around and I like to take it on the top and then just bring it down. I can take down the whole, you know, down to the lash line if I want to, but I like the fact that it marries the two together and I don't have like this big demarcation of, you know, a lighter color and then where I put the lid color, I just like it to all be blended together. I'm gonna take my tapered blending brush and I'm gonna go into the darkest color here. So I basically use these three. I haven't used this color, so I don't know I might use this color sometimes, I don't know, but these would be like the three that I would use. So I'm gonna go into like the deep dark chocolate. During the summers, I like to line my lid with the powder. It really kind of gives it a nice shadowing. And then I will take it and just do a little triangle. Not too much. I mean, I really don't want, I want this like really pretty nude color or a nude palette, but I don't wanna go over, I don't wanna go over the top, but this really has been looking really pretty and natural. I've been experimenting with this Dior palette for a couple weeks and I really like what it looks like. So I like using my finger too, to just to blend it all together. Sometimes working with these shadows, I'm not quite sure what they do or, you know, sometimes they apply a little, not blotchy, but I wanna just make sure that they're really incorporated into the two shadows I just put on. So there's no, again, rule that you can't use your finger. Just work everything in, making it look really natural. You can use one color, you can use two colors, you can use three colors. I just personally think with these palettes, like five colors is like a lot. Even if I was on set doing someone's makeup, I wouldn't be using these five colors. So I don't know why they always incorporate so many. I'm gonna go in with a dark chocolate waterproof eyeliner. And what I like to do is I like to just go to the base of my lashes like this. So I'm working at the base of the lash, trying to look like I have a thicker lash line because that is going to really define my eyes but not add the heaviness that if you were lining your eyes, especially during the summer, you don't even have to line your eyes if you don't want to. Sometimes though, with a nude look, I like to bring a little bit more definition to my lash line and I will do it like this, especially because I'm going to be putting mascara on and it's gonna give just a really beautiful defined look. Liner is done. It is just like that three quarters part. I didn't do the whole entire 
lash line. I don't want to do that. I'm going to go right in with my mascara. This is going to be my curling and volumizing mascara again to the base of the lash up. Now notice I did not curl my lashes prior because I'm going to be using my new heated eyelash curler that just launched. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Now you can use a mechanical lash curler first, then put your mascara on and then do your final touch with your heated eyelash curler, which really sets the, actually I'm going to turn this on now. So I have it on. I'm going to put it on just medium heat, not high and not low. It has three different options for you. This is my little technique when it comes to curling my lashes and getting them to stay up all day. So I'm going to just put on as little or as much mascara as that I want. I don't let it dry fully. I'll do my other lashes and then I'll go back with my heated eyelash curler and I'm going to mold my lashes. Mascara is on and I'm going to test. I always want to test my heated eyelash curler prior to putting it on my lashes. It's just a smart thing to do. You want to see where the heat is actually with the lash curler. So I'm going to just wait and see. It is about turning the like this you're just rolling the barrel in your hand so basically that's what i do i go to the base and then i roll it up this is something that you know if you're very impatient listen i'm a very impatient person but i will do this because my lashes will stay up so i don't get annoyed that i have to slowly work the heated eyelash curler to mold my lashes because the payout is fabulous. So you can see that I do have a little mascara that got on the lid. Don't worry about that. That's going to happen if your tips are still a little wet. It's not a big deal, but you can see I'm getting this beautiful sculpting with the heated eyelash curler. It is such a game changer. It's a little movement. It's a little technique and if you struggle with having, you know, your lashes stay up, I mean, I can curl my lashes with a mechanical lash curler and then they're up, but they don't stay up all day. This is almost like hairspray. I can feel them being molded. It's so great. So I'm very excited that we have relaunched. We did a USB and you're able to take advantage of really having beautiful lashes like that you can actually see. The lashes are curled with the heated eyelash curler. I'm going to turn it off now. Again, you need to really learn your own technique. If it doesn't work for you the first time, it will for the second or third or fourth time. It is a different way of curling the lashes. So it might be, you know, just a little bit of a learning curve at first to see really what works for you. So the lashes are done. We are going to go into this concealer. The concealer is from Maybelline. It is the instant age rewind. This was the last one that was actually on the shelf. This is in shade 120. So I was like lucky they had one lap. It just says shade 120. It doesn't tell me like the actual color. Maybe it will when I open the package. So I have one that I've had here for contouring that I've never used. I was playing around with it and I just never used it in a video or showing how it could contour. So I have one that can contour so we can see if it works because that's what it says it can do. So there's a, a lot of reviews, obviously over 90,000. We're at almost a hundred thousand with this with women loving this concealer. It actually has some great ingredients in it that help with pigmentation. So it's definitely a little bit more advanced than your regular kind of concealer. It's a twist up. Now remember, I showed you the foundation that was in this kind of same packaging, but it had a bigger sponge at the top for the foundation. And we love that foundation. It was like my alternative to a cushion foundation because it was in a stick form with this like fluffy little sponge at the top. So let's see if this has a color. It doesn't have a color. So it just says 120. So that that's that's the color, 120. So let's see how this really looks on the skin coming through this sponge applicator. I have to work it up a little bit. Not sure how much it's going to be coming out. And then utilizing it the same way that I would my normal lighten up or my eye brightener or my concealer. So I'm going to come down. Um, could be a little too light, but that's all right. This is for a demo purposes only. Love the sponge. I like that feeling. Um, feels cool on the skin. Definitely is feeling a little tingly. I don't know if that's supposed to supposed to feel tingly or not, but this is a concealer that seems to be able to be buildable, but I have to tell you, it is kind of, I don't know if it's reacting with my sunscreen or not, but seems to be a little bit burning <laughs> underneath my eyes. So I'm not quite sure why. Hmm, interesting. I would probably wash it off if I wasn't doing this tutorial. All right. So it seems to be a little lightweight too, that you have here. I don't know why. I don't know why I have that sensation of it feeling like it's burning my skin, but 
could be because I put on, you know, the sunscreen prior. I'm not quite sure, but that's a mineral sunscreen. So it shouldn't have any kind of really interaction. We are just working it into the skin here. I don't know. I kind of feel like I can see this on my skin. I don't know. I feel like it's a little dry, like compared to the wet and wild that we use. I'm not loving this. I don't really feel that it's giving actually really any good coverage. And I think that this would actually be my color. So I'm feeling like I have to reapply it. So 90,000 reviews. And I'm like probably the only person that's like, uh, I don't know. I just don't, I feel like I see it sitting on my skin. Feels almost like waxy in a way. I don't know. I'm a little perplexed because of 100,000. I keep thinking of like 100,000 reviews that are positive. Instant age rewind eraser, multi-use concealer. Why was it burning and why do I not like it? Why do I feel like it's mm, waxy? It feels waxy on my skin. That's that's my first impression, ladies. I was really wanting to love this. Let's try, let's try a little, this is color caramel. It doesn't have a number. So maybe, I don't know, maybe this is old. I have to tell you, there was different packaging. So maybe I got the old one, then that's why it was kind of burning on my skin. I don't know, because this is different packaging because it says new, <laughs> I probably got an old one. And this actually has, yeah, this is probably old because it does have the goji berry and it tells you the halo axle. I don't know how you say that, but this is the ingredients, the treatment concealer. That is probably the problem. It's an old one. That was why I was the only one left at CVS at the bottom of the aisle. Like literally I was on like my knees getting it. So this is caramel. This is the one that basically is probably the new, the new color, the new formula. Oh my gosh, mine's probably expired. That's probably the issue. This is probably not my color, but if you were going to contour, you could do some contouring on your face. I'm not a big contoury person, but let's just feel, this still feels the same way. It still feels kind of like waxy. I don't, I don't like that, but it's not burning. Like that's a good sign, right? So actually this feels more like a smoother and more of a silkier feel than this. This feels like, and I think that's the problem. I really think that's the problem. It's an old product. It was old packaging. It's probably expired. I'm taking off the contour color because it's obviously caramel is not the color for me, but I wouldn't be contouring like that anyway. I just wanted to feel the product because I had it and it's obviously a new packaging. That is my experience. Maybe we'll have to revisit this because this is probably just an old product and that's why it burned and it didn't feel good. So, okay, moving on. So since we used the Age Rewind Concealer, I'm going to be using the Age Rewind Eraser Treatment Makeup that I showed you before. So you can see the difference. It's the baby one, and then you have the larger one. Again, this is the new packaging. I've definitely concluded that I had an old product and that's why it burned on my face upon application. Not cute, right? So we like this foundation. I like to use my foundation buffing brush when I apply this because the sponge, I feel like just moves the product all around and it gets streaky and I don't like that. And I think I bought two of these. I think that this is my color. What color is this? 130 buff beige. So more of the story ladies is that if you pick up the eraser multi-use concealer without the new packaging and just as a number, it is an old product to do not buy it. So I'm going to work this into my skin. I love how this foundation feels. It's very lightweight. It's nice and smooth. It really looks beautiful on the skin. It is affordable. It does have a chemical sunscreen in it though, just to be aware of that. I can smell it and I do not love that. So I have mineral sunscreen on and I have a chemical sunscreen on right now. That is definitely interesting. I wish they didn't have that in it, but it is what it is. Foundation is on, very effortless to apply that foundation. I'm gonna go right into Graceful, my lip liner, bring my lips back to life. They are a little nuded out when I put the foundation over them. So I'm going to go in with a waterproof lip liner. I'm going to go in with a little vitamin E first before I put on my lipstick, because when I see my lips looking like the desert, this is the problem. They need to have a little treatment on prior to putting on my lipstick, which will be pretty smart. I'm in the nude family. I want a little pink. I don't want to do figure it out too nude. I want a soft pink bringing some life to my face. And then I will top it with my Shams, which is going to just give me that little extra pretty gloss bubbly. I named it after I shortened it. It's really like a champagne color. And then let's do a little Palm Beach on the cheeks. 
cream blush goes right on the cheeks really looks beautiful over this kind of foundation just really works well together they like melt together blush is on cream blush is beautiful for the summer season ladies i'm going in with l'oreal this is going to be a brow stylist this is an ash brown i'm actually just going to comb my brows up they seem to have combed down for some reason is that even a word comb down they went down they need to be up they are fine i don't need to add anything to them and to finish off besides what i usually like to do with which is my caudalie my beauty elixir on my face beautiful to put this in the refrigerator and it'll be cool you can spray your face throughout the day if you are in and out if you are tending to your garden and being a coastal grandmother and really living up the lifestyle and wanting to have that extra burst of hydration on the face. You can see how it gives you that hydration, that dewy look. But I wanted to tell you, I bought two different products recently. One is a fragrance, not rose, and one is a hair mist, not rose. So I really went outside my comfort zone. I really went into a different smell category or scent category, if you will. I bought the Bobbi Brown Beach. I bought this actually, I think last month, and I've been holding on to it because I wanted to get closer to summer. So this is a really interesting fragrance because it smells like you bottled the beach. So I think that if you're not near the coastline and you really want to have that summer feeling, or if you wanna bring yourself back to family trips where you went to the beach or the coast, it's a really great way to do that. And it's amazing how you can capture that smell literally the beach. So since the smell really brings back, holds memory. And when I smell this, so many things like just go through the mind when you smell a fragrance and it literally is the beach. So I've been wanting to buy it for years. I finally just pulled the trigger and I was like, you know what, I'm going to buy it and I'm going to spray it. And I'm going to really from Memorial day to labor day, I have these goals. It's a three month time period. I do all kinds of different things for wellness and for just really focusing in on this summer season at a slower pace, but at least I tried to make it at a slower pace. And then I got the Diptyque Ilio. This is a hair mist. So it comes in this limited edition. I think this is limited edition, but it's a beautiful box, very Capri. It's very much this Italian summer. And so of course I want to buy into that whole like mentality. Like I really want to place myself there, even though I'm not there. And this smells so fresh. It's a very hard scent to really kind of verbalize for you. I can't really give you any word pictures besides being in that whole Mediterranean Italian lifestyle, maybe picking lemons from like the bush when you're having your Prosecco. I don't know. That's, that's like my whole thought process. Like that's where I go, ladies. That's what I do. I really, I visualize, I do things that are going to lift my spirits, get me to another element, right? Cause it's very stressful in life in general. And I need to have these escapes and this is how I do it. I've told you before, I do it in beauty. I do it with my makeup. I do it with my hair. I do it with my, my hair mist. I do it any way I can to really kind of just keep that beautiful vibe from the inside coming out. And that's how I really do it. And so this was a very interesting makeup tutorial, not expecting to have a burning sensation with the concealer, but being able to red flag it for you and know that probably means it's an old product, old packaging. And I should have known when it was the last product at the bottom of the <laughs> Off the shelf that it was not good so hopefully i will not have any major irritation i will take this off and until my next video i will see you later